Oh, the cops are excited about Hasbro stuff too. Okay, people, welcome back to a Hasbro Fan Fest Spring 2021 rundown. I figured I already did a weekly this week. We can do something a bit more laid back, a little bit more personal. Because if you watched Fan Fest, it was about four hours. And I am going directly from there into here to talk about it, to try to condense it down to about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Get my initial thoughts onto, well, not paper, onto video, I guess. And then gonna come back around with Veebs later in the weekend or next week and do a more long form, oh, what is that? What could that mean? The mysteries of the action figure. But the whole thing started with their new Fortnite series, which really I was the most interested in because it's new, it's fresh. We don't know where it's going, and this kind of told us exactly where it's going. With Wave 1, they're starting out with Lynx, Ripley, Chaos Agent, and Midas Rex. These are all cool looking. It still has that Fortnite flavor, and yeah, I have the pictures in front of me, so I gotta keep looking down. It feels like you could take them and integrate them into other displays, just like we've been doing with the Jazzwares line. And speaking of that, it's kind of awesome that they're not... <laughs> well, hmm, what's the right word here? I was gonna say stepping on their toes, but... It, they have the license, they can do whatever they want, but they do seem aware of what Jazzwares has already made. Because even if it's the same character as we've seen in the current line, they've changed it up to a different version. They talked a little bit about the articulation, the pinless double elbows and knees on Lynx on a female figure. Oh, we're seeing some good stuff this weekend. But I think my favorite out of the basic wave is Ripley. It's just that oddball shape. It fits in to my favorite type of character in Fortnite. It's not food but it's weird. I like that they're also keeping the accessories. It may not be as much as Jazzwares, but they're coming with a weapon, they're coming with their harvesting tool, they're coming with some back bling. In the six inch scale, for, I think I saw $22.99. So we were worried about the price point being up there. It looks like it's standard Hasbro six inch price. Did I mention the line is called Victory Royale? I, I think I've done it during the weekly but I haven't said it here because I haven't felt fancy yet. Victory Royale. But then they went into the deluxe figure, starting out with, well, Meow Souls, because what better pick for a bigger character is there than Meow Souls? But again, they skewed away from what Jazzwares did, put him in the, the shadow. Is this what it's called? I don't know. It's a dark repaint. It's kind of more evil looking. The other deluxe pack is Sky with Ollie. Now, from what I understand, Ollie is, a, is that a glider? Is that something you come into the game with? But with this, they also mentioned that they are going to be doing the photo reel on the faces that have human features. Basically, it sounds like they're coming out of the gate hard. They've looked at all the other Hasbro lines. This, 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 and this works. Let's take that, put it in here and here and here and here, and then add a little ooh on top of it. Because they even have a shark in the line. Again, I don't play Fortnite, but they describe something about you get close to the water, this thing likes to come out and get you, and you can get accessories out of it. This is an accessory carrying case. Because the shark splits in half, you stuff it with goodies. It's a, it's an accessory pinata. And judging by the picture of Meowsel's kind of being pulled behind it, it's a good size, if Meowsels is as big as we think it is. And then to wrap up their panel, they showed some more pictures of the foundation. Uh, not really anything we didn't already know, but they were like, hey, go pre-order it. That moved into Transformers next. And for Transformers, we had already seen some of this stuff. When it came to the Titan class arc, I was already kind of interested, but then <laughs> they started showing how big it is and what it actually did. The robot mode's kind of weird, but I love the arc mode. But more than that, the Teletran option that you can put in front of your other Transformers, that may be the biggest selling point for me. But do I really want to buy it just for that when I'm not going to use the arc with the rest of my display? I'm not attached to the robot at all. I don't know. We'll see what happens if I ever actually see it in person. We had seen the leaks of Rodimus Prime. It looks more impressive in person with all the studio lighting and the fancy backgrounds. Again, I said this during a weekly when this first popped up. It's got that aged look on the face. Like he goes from teenager to 45 year old with the pull of the Matrix. Still doesn't seem a lot for Commander class, but it does have the big old Winnebago trailer on the back. It can open up, you can stuff it full of stuff. It's got the turret on top and the car out from underneath and the sword and the gun. It's Rodimus Prom. But I am way more interested in Galvatron. Again, we had already seen this pop up on Instagram, but I just love the look of this. People point out that the body is shaped kind of odd, but I feel like 
well, one, the gun mode is so fantastic that I don't mind the robot being slightly oddly... Sh it, because it looks like it goes from that to that. I have no attachment whatsoever to Beast Wars Scorponok. In fact, when you say that name, I think of a much bigger figure. But this also works. I guess in Beast Wars, he was more of a... Scorpion. I don't know a lot about the fossilizers other than they can break apart and become armor pieces for other Transformers, but they do look interesting. Plus, this new one's name is Wingfinger. Isn't that a Nine Inch Nail song? After that, they veered back into my lane with Autobot Tracks. Yes, you must say Autobot Tracks. I've told this story many a time too. I like the look of the character and I need it for my shelf, but as a kid, that car with the wings that popped out. That was my favorite vehicle ever. I love that thing, and I love that they incorporated the wing thing into the new version too. But then they veered back out of my lane with Rhinox. I have nothing against the Beast Wars. It's just, I've never seen it. So I see these characters and I think, I didn't have that as a kid, and I've never seen that cartoon. Who is that? But an interesting figure still pops out of me, especially the grays and the greens on this thing with the little gold accents. That's a good-looking figure. They came back around to the bone thing again with Tricranius. Is that its name? It has the Triceratops, its bones, it changes into a robot, but it comes with a lot of blast effects. And then finally for the Generations or War for Cybertron or whatever this line's called, there was the Shattered Glass Blur. And I've always thought of Shattered Glass as kind of being the mirror version, the evil version, but I don't know the actual story, so let me know if I got that completely wrong. But seeing Blur with an eye patch, that's got to be an evil version, right? That's just a goatee away from the darkest timeline. They did show one more thing, this Optimus Prime that transformed by itself. It has like all kinds of circuits and servos and chips and electronicals in it. So they brought out Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes to present it. And it was cool. You talk to it, you tell it what to do, and it, he's moving and he's breathing and he's transforming but the first thing out of jason mew's mouth and i guess it's the uh, the actual command to make optimus prime transform is optimus prime convert and i could just hear fanboys heads all over the world just transformers don't convert they transform brought up a tear to my next up was power rangers lightning collection again another line i don't really buy I have no connection to the show. Back in the day, if that show came on, it meant I was late for work or I needed to be out the door already. But when they announced the Mighty Morphin Metallic versions, and I think Pink is the one that's already been solicited or out, I thought, ooh, that'd be a cool team to have in this interesting visual style. So what did they do today? Announce the other four for that team. Just bam, 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 bam. There's Mighty Morphin Metallic Yellow Ranger Aisha, Mighty Morphin Metallic Blue Ranger Billy, Mighty Morphin Metallic Black Ranger Adam, and Mighty Morphin Metallic Red Ranger Rocky. Yes, I had to read all those. Like I said, I don't know. During the presentation, they said they didn't have pictures of the unmasked portraits for each character, but then they put the pre-orders over on Pulse, and the pictures of those portraits were pleasantly portrayed. I, I was going with the P alliteration. I can't judge how close the likenesses are, since I don't know the show, but they look like good human heads. Where am I going with that? Again, the interest for me is that slick metallic look and getting all four or five at the same time. Then we move into G.I. Joe. Oh, chat room. Yeah, yeah. You let me down. Don't get me wrong, there were a lot of you in there like, man, y'all need to shut the hell up. But there was a lot of you in there just... Mm. Anyway, there was a lot riding on this and... I don't know. I just like action figures, I guess. I can see the disappointment that they didn't announce anything for the standard classified line, but they've been sitting on these movie figures for a while. And now that the movie is on the horizon, it was time to announce them. That's all there is to it. They showed off the movie Storm Shadow. It's a good looking ninja type character. It's basically Storm Shadow, but I can see the complaints about it being that eggshell or that bone color. You think of Storm Shadow, you want that bright white. For Baroness, of course, the first thing that catches your eye is the short hair. It is so unlike any Baroness that I have in my brain pan. Besides the short hair though, it looks like a good Baroness figure. But she has the costume, she has the glasses. 
says she has black hair. I, I'll give it a shot. The one that confuses me very, very much into where I can't think of a better term for confusion very, very much is Scarlet from the movie. I think I almost like this better than the classified version. Again, extra detail, but the colors are even more muted than what we saw with the reissue of Scarlet. And then she has those classic colors kind of poking through in places. If I were forced to buy just one, I'd probably get Scarlet because I can fit her in with my other classified stuff. Not that you can't fit the rest of these into your classified collection. It's just, you know, there's a certain aesthetic that we're used to at this point. Kind of sci-fi mixed with fantasy military. Akiko is apparently a whole new character for the movie, but again... It's an interesting looking action figure. I know, it's not the classified series. She didn't appear in a comic book in 1988, or the original cartoon. And then the movie is called Snake Eyes. So of course we're gonna get an action figure of Snake Eyes. It's really hard to mess up Snake Eyes. I, well, I will admit, the first G.I. Joe movie when they put the mouth on him, oh no. All the right beats are here. He has his swords, he has his ninja mask, type situation happening. You got your glossy blacks, you have your satin blacks, you have your matte blacks. Is matte and satin the same thing? I think I heard that during the panel. Again, I figure this may be met with more positivity when the movie comes out, and even more if it's good. But right now, they're just interesting looking action figures. Then we get into Marvel Legends. This is always... I, I, nothing against the rest of the panels, but these guys just feel the most at ease in their situation. But their presentation actually started Thursday night on the premium party thing or whatever. They showed a 90s domino that's redesigned from the dominoes we've seen before. And then they switched to Cannonball's legs. Made the joke of, you know, it's a one and a half figure pack, but then they showed a Cannonball upper body where it's changed in color a bit different head. But then get into today, they start things right off the bat with another look at Quasar. Comes with a couple of extra hands, comes with some power effects, spiffy packaging. It is exclusive to Walgreens in the US, EB Games in Canada. But then they didn't waste any time going right into the Ultron they had teased a while back. We didn't know how it was going to show up. Oh, well, I can't say that, can I? Leaks being what they are. But I like the look of this. It's a nice classic Ultron look. They did show that it has some Kirby crackle that you can pop in the mouth. You can take it out if you don't like that. Options. That led right into the Vault Guardsmen, which, did they announce that it was an Iron Man wave before that or after? Either way, we knew where this was going. Some metal clad characters. The Vault Guardsmen is one of those simple classic designs that sticks in your head. There's not a lot to it, but it's interesting. The one on the leak list that most people were not looking forward to is the Hologram Iron Man. And it's cool, and it's, well again, I'm going to use this word, interesting. But then again, it's a nice transparent plastic. It's a translucent blue. And the white paint on top to kind of accentuate the edges and do the light thing, it spiffs it up a bit. Does the Hologram Armor shoot Hologram Blasts? How does that work? Then again, it's comics, so <laughs> meh. Something I've been looking forward to since 80th anniversary Iron Man came out is the stealth redeco. I've always loved this color scheme. I love the stealth figures from before. I love the word stealth. It's, it's just a crazy word that rolls off the tongue. Stealth. Lots of Iron Man blasts in this way. Well, lots of Iron Mans. Or not so much Iron Mans, there's also Iron Heart. Nice sculpt to a female armored body. I love the unmasked head, the way the hair is sculpted, the way it hangs, the eyes painted in. It just looks fantastic. But then there's the new effect. When they said new effect, I was looking at it like, well, isn't that pretty much the Iron Man blast we've always gotten? But then they got to the picture of the swirling smoke cloud thing. But then they mentioned that it can also go on the foot. I feel like it would be better used down there. Kind of a jet stream or a, or a trail of some kind. But then they moved over to Dark Star. And again, I know, we're talking about this and leaks and, and it's been, but seeing him in actual plastic form, that's when I get excited. I'm like, oh yes. And yes, it's basically mostly reuse. The hands are those large power wielding hands that look kind of odd. But it's when you get to the head that I'm like, oh, yep, I need a dark star. I love the hair. I love the headdress. I love the eyes. They're yellow and it kind of blends into the rest of the color scheme, but there's also a sinisterness to it or something. Like there's a power 
just right behind those eyes that you're kind of scared of. But that's when they started talking about the Winter Guard and how we have Red Guardian from a couple of years ago. Now we have Dark Star. Might as well add to that with an Ursa Major build a figure, right? When I first saw this, I thought, oh, that bear's got abs. But then I also thought, oh, that's going to be awesome with the other two. Now we need Vanguard. Now we need a Crimson Dynamo classic version to go along with these and also a titanium man, right? But that's wishful thinking. Well, that's the sign of a good figure, right? Oh, that's gonna go in the display. I'm gonna need other stuff to go with that in the display. Plus it's a big old bear. And could this be our gateway to Grizzly and other characters that go along with Grizzly? Mm. And could you say this makes this a Build-A-Bear wave? There's an exclusive y'all missed out on. Yeah, call me up, Hasbro. But that doesn't finish off the wave. They came back around and announced and, well, showed the modular Iron Man. If you were alive in the 90s, reading comics or playing video games, you recognize this look. But this not coming with a builder figure piece, having some empty space in the package, it should have had a big ass gun that you can drop down on it. They also announced a Marvel Legends in-game final battle Thor coming way after the movie. But the upside to that is that they can base it directly on the movie. They're not using the concept art. They can get it completely accurate and not have to redo it again later. And this looks good. I'm a big fan of their MCU stuff because it's, well, this is one that's $25, but it's still cheaper than import stuff. They also showed off the Sentinel box and how big that thing's gonna be, holy moly. But the big thing, the big tease was this video for something related to the Fantastic Four. They said it was gonna be the original HasLab before the Sentinel became the HasLab. This is gonna be the next HasLab and it's gotta be Galactus, right? My mind wants to wander over to the Fantastic Car, but it's gotta be Galactus. <laughs> And then they finished everything off with Star Wars, which made me think, oh, big finish, here we go. And I can't complain about them just showing us plastic versions of the characters they already told us they were gonna give us. But at the same time, I thought something big and different, but okay, I I'm still good with this too. Start things off right with General Lando. I like this, I like that we're getting it. The cloth goods cape seems kind of <laughs> light and breezy. Well, okay, I say light and breezy, it's probably stiff. That's why it's it looks better in package, but then again, it's got the tray pushing it down onto the shoulders where it should be. All the sculpting looks nice. The likeness is good. The thing that throws me is the chest joint. It's kind of hollow. It's it's open. Or maybe it's just posed that way. We get it in hand. We take the bottom, push it forward, push the chest back, close that gap. And yeah, I'm hoping for the best there. The one I was looking most forward to was RS Singh and it doesn't disappoint. They started the comments right off with, we couldn't get the antenna down as small as it actually is in real life. So I figure the first thing a lot of people are going to do is snip that off, put a guitar wire or something up there. The gun seems kind of big and thick, but overall, I love the look of this. They did talk about her longer fingers and how it was a challenge to make her hold the weapons and then showed this picture where she's kind of flipping us off, right? Does that mean something else in Star Wars land? Or I, I don't know. Tech looks amazing. Finishing off the core group of the Bad Batch. They show the tools that can come out of the tool belt around his waist and the different sculpt and the helmet. And oh man, this thing looks fantastic. And again, I'm going to say it. The mask going over the regular head makes the helmet look a little big, but for some reason I don't mind it as much on tech. Maybe because I don't have it in person yet. I'm just looking at pictures. And he does have all that extra stuff on top. So I, that may be making it look better to me for some reason. Completely want Zero from the Mandalorian. I, in fact, I want that whole jailbreak crew, but this is a good start. It's a good looking droid figure for the shelf. It's another Mandalorian character, which is never a bad thing. I, yeah, I'm happy. I'm all over this. But to continue the Mandalorian love, not that it was a surprise because, like I said, they had announced these back at the last live stream. But the last one was Casca Reeves. Still kind of has that animated feel that Bo-Katan has, that lighter leather look for the belt and the holster. But the blue on the armor seems darkened, like they kind of made it more towards the show this time. That unmasked head with the Sasha Banks face, yeah. 
Gimme. And that was it for the show. Hopefully I condensed this down into digestible nuggets for you. Because I know the show does go on. But man, I see a lot of complaints about that of, why don't they just show us the figures? But that's like going to a convention. This is as close as we're getting at the moment. I kind of appreciate that. If you're just wanting to see the figures, wait for videos like this. Or, you know, directly after the panel, the pictures go up. But like I said, I'll come back with Veebs, do a foosh cast. We're going to dig deeper, look at the comparisons see what's used, what's reuse, what he's going to buy, what he hates, what I'm not going to buy, what I'm going to buy. Yeah, it, it'd be more involved next week. But for now, yeah, I hope this was useful. If you enjoyed the rundown, comment. This is weird sitting down. <laughs> like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel. Patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. I don't know. I just like looking at plastic.